What up? I got nice skin here with me. This ain't a diss song. But, um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheesehead, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. Pull up in your town, yeah. I had to shave it off. You know, I had the beard going and everything. So I, I, when we came back from um, from Winnipeg, I got rid of the beard. And yesterday I shaved. So this is next, you know. So I just wanted to do it progressively, not one big shock. So my wife started calling because it's so white. My wife started calling me Papa Smurf. So that's when I had to get rid of it. So um, speaking of progressions, what has been uh, Aaron Jones's progression through camp? I know Matt had said he wanted to get him a series in Winnipeg, and obviously that didn't happen. Where do you think he's at? Well, I think the biggest thing with him is, you know, how we're trying to utilize him um, in the past game. Um, you know, now he's also gotten used to, you know, how we run outside zone now. I mean, he's doing a really good job of, of pressing it. And plus his, his knowledge of the game, you can tell he's in his, his third year. You know, you can see him being more as a, a vet, you know, as opposed to just, you know, a second year guy still learning a lot of things. And he's still learning. But you can you get the sense that he's more comfortable with just just being at this level. Um, I know you had the the Ty Montgomery experiment a couple years ago. You've, you've had a lot you've had a lot of stress on you as a teacher here in your few years. Um, but what is this training camp been like? Where you've had Corey came in and you, uh, Darren Hall and um, the kid from the Colts. I'm drawing someone drawing a blank on yeah, you. Right. You've been a new football. This has been. A crazy month for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it has from the, the standpoint of having to, you know, teach and reteach. And you try to see what, you know, because some of these guys that come in, you know, they can equate what we're doing to stuff that they've done in the past. So you try to utilize that as much as you can as a transition for them. But, you know, every time you reteach something, it helps you um, because it's, um, you know, it's a new system. Um, you know, for me, you know, that I'm learning. So it just helps to kind of reinforce my own knowledge with the, um, you know, with the system. You have all those quote unquote you guys in just one big meeting extra or because there's such different phases of learning it? No, I have them um, like, like as, as they come in, you know, I have them all, you typically all together. Um, like some guys may have been there a few days earlier than, than the other guys, but I still have them all in the same room, go through some of the same things. Because um, they all want to hear it again because the more and more they hear it and get it saturated in their brain, the easier it is for them to make the transition when they get on the field. Obviously, the scheme and the playbook is different, but how different have things been for you just in the fact that the fullback is not only back, but it's, it's a significant piece of the puzzle? Um, it, it's kind of it's kind of helped me from the, the standpoint because now it gives me, you know, a, a kind of another – facet of the offense, you know, not just learning, but to teach, you know, and to teach and get the fullbacks right and get the fullbacks ready. It hasn't been, you know, that challenging, you know, because I've, I've utilized the fullback position before. It kind of just, I, I think it kind of works with, you know, the H's hearing what those guys' jobs is and also the, from the fullback hearing what the A, because in this offense, you know, you want the fullback to kind of be a weapon. I mean, those guys have to you know, they have to not only know their job, they have to understand what the halfback does just in case they're thrown in that situation. You got to know what the second tight end does. And you also have to know what the receivers do just in case if you ever, you know, have to get split out in those situations. So it's it's been good, you know, for me to to learn all those facets and then being able to, you know, convey it to the, you know, to the guys, you know, that are fullbacks. There have been, I think, Oh, oh, without question. I mean, you don't like when even when you're doing your grading, you're not adding that to your grades because it doesn't count. But you know, it still gives you a visual of what a person can do um, in a in a real true game situation. You know, whether it's them making a hard cut or breaking a tackle or you get an opportunity to see them make reads. So, I mean, from an evaluation standpoint, you treat it the same as as though it, the play did count, you know, although you don't add it to stats and stuff. Matt was talking yesterday about how he feels um, Dexter still has a little bit to go in, in the pass protection aspect of being a running back. Where, where um, do you see him in that? And also, 
catching the ball out of the backfield? I know he's had some trouble doing that, but the, the stuff besides running the ball, how do you see him progressing through that? Well, that, that's the thing. That's the, the biggest thing that you know we're emphasizing, like I'm emphasizing with him and that we're learning. He's better than he was before, you know, but still, you know, still needs to work to get, you know, to, I guess to hit that plateau that we want. You know, when we say, man, this guy, we feel really great about him, you know, in this situation. So he's making progress, you know, in that, that direction. Some guys, you know, they come out, boom, they get it right away. No issues, no problems. And some guys, it just takes them a little bit to get to where you want them to go. And I, I guess the biggest thing is, you know, he's putting forth the time into it um, because he knows that, I mean, all those guys know that we have to be able to trust you, you know, out there on, on the field. I mean, that's part of our deal um, in that room. So he's making progress um, towards, you know, being at that that level. Where we say, okay, you know, this, this guy's good to go. I kind of want to ask you the same question about Aaron Jones. Um, you know, he was kind of probably a liability in both phases of the passing game his first year. Is are there, are those both strengths? Do you think now both uh, protection and receiving? Yeah, I really don't. I really don't have a, a problem with him. Um, obviously, as a receiver, but even in from a protection standpoint. Um, because he knows who he has. I mean, sometimes, you know, we have this little joke that we talk about, hey, man, just get ran over slow, you know, and they, they all understand and know what that means. But you'll see him, because a lot of times people just try to bull rush him, but he'll go ahead and I mean, he'll stick his face in there. You know, sometimes he'll get, you know, walk back, you know, but it, but it takes so much by the time that the defender becomes a threat to get to the quarterback, the ball is already gone. So, it, so he has a mixture of times where he just, bam, he's picking the guy up, no issues, no problems. And other times he's fighting his tail off. But by the time the guy gets to a, a position where he could be a threat for the quarterback, the ball's already out. You know, so from that standpoint, I, I, don't, have, I don't have any issues with him because he's willing. You know, so that, and that's the first part of being a good pass protector. When, when we were in here and talked about the installation of this run scheme and how the backs read it and all that goes into it, is there... I know you know what Aaron and Jamal can do because you've seen it, but Jamal hasn't practiced. Aaron hasn't done this at full speed with those guys. So when they're doing the D, C, B, A, those reads mm -hmm. in Chicago, they, especially Jamal, they haven't been on those tracks. They haven't seen. I mean, is there a little, I want to say concern, but how long do you think that might take them to, to get that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to take them, take them uh, very long at all. Um, because I think part of it is because now with them being, you know, in their third year, because um, even just whether we're sitting going through stuff um, from a meeting standpoint or we're doing our walkthroughs, you know that they got the they got the instincts of understanding how to how the run game works and how the, their reads work in comparison to, you know, running the same type of plays last year. But it was ran a little bit differently from a discipline standpoint. So they got a good feeling. And a lot of it just comes down to, this natural instinctive ability. So I think that's what helps, you know. So so once those guys continue to, to work their tracks, I mean, I think I think they're going to be fine. I guess along those lines, like you said, the instinct. So re is it really just um, what the thing to watch and practice, I guess, when especially when Jamal comes back to that the one step cut, rather than the shuffle or a dance, right? That's mm -hmm. probably the one thing because the instinct would be, well, if that's open. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's just like you just said, it's A, B, C, D, you know, reads. And if it closes down, you do a great job pressing it, boom, you're just reacting. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing is that the scheme is more reactionary than, than anything as opposed to being a, a deal where you got to, uh, okay, I got to look at this to do this, I got to do that. It's just, bam, there's my course, boom, take it. Now it's just reacting to it, to what's in front of me, and that's that's stuff they've been doing, you know, all, all their lives. Um, Danny was saying before you guys went to Winnipeg that he thinks he'll be back this week. I'm wondering what what is he like? What is his skill set like? What do you see from him from that perspective? And then what is he like in your room? Because he seems to be, you know, whether he's dressing up with Rogers for the road trip or whatever else, he seems to have pretty effervescent personality too. Yeah, and you know, he's he's very professional um, in our room. Um, tries to learn everything. I mean, I sit right next to him in our in our big room when we're all meeting as as a unit. So even if we're doing stuff like going through the pass game and he, and you know, coach talking to the receivers, I mean, he's saying, okay, the receivers should be doing this. So he's always trying to learn and engage himself in the entire offense. Um, and just that from a skill set, I mean, he's he's pretty athletic. 
um, you know, he has some versatility, you know, um, as a blocker, as a runner, um, you know, and as, as a receiver, because that's what he did, you know, at Northwestern. Um, so I think he gives us a lot. You know, the biggest thing I, I tell uh, the fullbacks in this offense is you really got to be, I mean, you got to be a weapon, you know, to to make this to make this thing go. So so he kind of fits that bill, you know, um, of, of what we want from the fullback position. So, you know, we're pretty pleased with him, and I know he's – Still working to get out there. So, I just love my team. Yeah, that's the team with them big G's on the helmet.